Hi there guys and welcome to another show. Today we are going to talk about Tencent. Tencent is the biggest game publisher in the world. Based out of China, where the company comes from, uh, and where it has the significant market, sh mar market share, Tencent has many different businesses. This is a really example of how Chinese businesses work. Let's dive in. Stock price at the highest peak was uh, around 61 uh, US dollars on the New York exchange. Well, today is uh, something around 33, 34 US dollars, almost half price that it once was. And all of this happened in the last two months. So what is happening with the company? Let's take a look at some numbers. In 2017, the company had 240 billion RMB uh, uh, revenue. That's Chinese money, and that's nearly 35 billion US dollars. That was the revenue. Well, the profit was around 18 billion uh, RMB, and that's around 2.6 billion US dollars. <clears throat> now, um, what we should take a look at the, at the company also that's important is they have over time uh, 12 acquisitions. Most of those companies are in the game sector. Uh, biggest one and most, maybe the most famous one is uh, Riot that has a League of Legends uh, game. That's the, the, maybe the biggest one, the, the biggest name. And um, their investments, their merger and acquisition and their uh, investing team, they have their own VC arm of their company today, has invested in all directions. It's from logistic, e-commerce, everywhere that there's no limitation to where they haven't invested i ai machine learning things like that robotics and so on but let's dive in and see what actually tencent has under their management in their portfolio of their services and things like that <clears throat> everything started back in the late 90s with uh, uh, their message first messaging platform at the time was a competitor of msn a messenger uh, at competitor of ICQ that originally sued them because of the name and that some design um, misunderstandings or copying from, from Tencent. I don't know what happened in that time. But uh, they had a messenger. There was really a desktop messenger. And um, today, that's a broadly used business messenger in China. Mostly all businesses have um, QQ messenger as a communication tool for the, their business and also for networking purposes in terms of business. But also important what uh, this messenger gave birth is QQ Mail. That's today everybody have QQ Mail in China. I think they are nearly, um, they are, I'm not quite sure, but I think they have a nearly billion registered users on their mail that somebody somewhere um, claimed in, in the news when they were giving some interviews. And that's only one social platform they have. <clears throat> now, beside, beside that one, they have something called QZone. QZone is some kind of um, sharing network similar maybe to Twitter or Facebook to the Western markets, something like that. And they have something that's called WeChat. Now, if you have ever been to China or you did any research on China, you already know about WeChat. Um, Everybody use it. It's a personal communication tool. It's a like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Skype, all those things combined. <clears throat> and uh, has some advanced features because it has many users and um, they don't have big um, monetization on the platform besides payments. And all these platforms today have the, the same payment uh, technology, but the most broadly used is the uh, WeChat Pay. That's the, that's the one that's very popular and very, very broad, broadly used, competing with uh, Alipay and some Baidu Pay products. <clears throat> but um, let's, uh, let's take a look at other things that Tencent also have uh, there. They have QQ Music, where people are mostly uh, listening uh, music from. They, they have the small subscription fee for all unlimited music. They have QQ Video platform, something similar to, I would say, YouTube or something like that. Also, it's not only just the YouTube, you can watch movies there, so it's like kind of Netflix involved, but I don't know. It's, it's not, not the, the, the mainstream, that one is not their primary product. 
they do push a lot of marketing on it but uh, i didn't see many people use it so much like they use other products now they have a qq browser something that's also similar to a chrome browser i would guess uh, tencent has their own Q qq map or tencent map how they call it um, because there are different names for in china and outside also they have a qq cloud now qq cloud is working really perfectly it's so good uh, no matter where you are Tencent uh, uh, Cloud, their products and their services work really, really nice. But I didn't see many businesses use them. And they have uh, AI and machine learning labs in Shenzhen uh, that are really doing all kinds of experiments. <clears throat> now, beside this business, the core of Tencent business behind payments and the services they provide is games. Tencent Games. Tencent is the biggest game publisher in the world. Probably, uh, if you are in game industry, you know them. <clears throat> but they, they publish a lot of games. They have a lot of game titles. They hold a lot of different things about gaming. And uh, they have uh, eSports in China. That's for, for all the games. Um, under this eSports, they have uh, something similar to Twitch, some live streaming for gamers, game ways that gamers can monetize their skills and... and game coach and things like that. They have uh, Tencent Pictures that's related also in the entertainment space of the business where they publish foreign movies and they invest in the domestic movie market. Also, I think they invest in the foreign movies, things like that. And they have Tencent Comics where they are uh, trying to produce some content in, in comics uh, industry and things like that. So that's mostly what Tencent does. Now, the, the revenue is 40% uh, for, for the Tencent from gaming in, in industry. And let's see what happened. The, the moment that their stock dropped, started dropping rapidly, is the moment that they have been refused the second year for gaming license in China. China basically changed its law in reducing the number of the games that could be published in their market. They are what, uh, what Chinese governments wants to do is reduce the amount of entertainment that's pushed marketed to the uh, 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 people they want to reorganize people towards education. That's the, the strategic goal of China. Now, because Tencent was the biggest publisher, they published so much that government limited, limited them at publishing more. So th this clearly shows you that there is something in China uh, uh, going on when it's come to these big companies because the Chinese government, from the other hand, they don't want to have one giant company controlling the, all the market. They want to give a diversify market where there is a competition involved. And um, that's what happens. So the, the market responded and they lost the share. But um, I want to uh, turn the other, other way around and give you another insight about Tencent. Is that um, you remember that WeChat I mentioned before that everybody have. If you have ever been in China, you know. Now the WeChat has payments inside of the WeChat. And um, they integrated their payments to many different applications and many different um, companies use their payment solution to charge for their services and fees. Um, they also use Alipay as well, but mostly, mostly Tencent. And Tencent is considered to be social, more social oriented. More people use it socially because it's a preferred uh, chatting platform. If you ever look the, the day active users on WeChat and the time day active users spend, so WeChat is off the chart compared to all other apps. Uh, so um, because people spend so much time on WeChat, they are purchasing different uh, they're spending their money in different apps, whether are they buying something in some game, whether they are buying some service, ordering <coughs> ordering taxi or their Whatever they are spending their money, the Tencent has insight because it go, flows through their financial um, service. Now, what Tencent did in the last three years is they released the WeChat mini apps, which are extension of the, the certain product or service and can could be paid from within an app. So, you, for example, you don't have to leave the, 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 the WeChat app. You could make the payment from within app to a certain a, a provider of a service or a product and you could basically keep on using uh, WeChat. <clears throat> now this gave uh, made Tencent a godlike 
insider in the investment industry. Because if there is a startup and the startup is uh, just released their service and they are uh, using, they are looking for new customers, looking for new uh, companies, and then they are doing their marketing and they are being successful, they are getting traction, there are people purchasing, there are people buying, right? They are the first one to notice what's going on, right? Think about it, Google bought PayPal. For example and you are using PayPal on your website to monetize uh, uh, your service or your product the Google would have all the data about your sales so what is happening is Tencent comes knocks on the startup doors when the startup is still five people ten people when they're just starting out when they just got their first traction let's say and the, the, they see the repeat purchases from the customers, things like that, they see the numbers are growing. And Tencent is, whether investing a lot of money, whether buying them, getting control of these companies, and he's just eating the companies as, as they go. Now, uh, these acquisitions are not included when I mention Tencent have 12 acquisitions, because those acquisitions are probably in hundreds, and they're all small teams. So, uh, uh, those uh, uh, investments and those acquisitions that Tencent made, um, they, they made the industry in China very, um, I would say investment industry was very, uh, not angry, but despised the Tencent because the Tencent has this data, they, they are not sharing it for, for normal reasons, it's, it's private, right? But um, they can see this data and they were going and just investing in, in the startup that, are, that have growth potentials. So, uh, um, these days, most of the people would say, China, either you're going to the Tencent or Alibaba, because Alibaba has a similar ability, just they're not, they're not exercising that much compared to the Tencent, who also controls the social side. Meaning that if you get investment from Tencent in China, they have ability to go to a mass market. They can broadcast to all their uh, social channels, whether to Alibaba could broadcast this more to the e-commerce. So if you have physical product, Alibaba is kind of better fit. If you have uh, some service that you're charging, the, the Tencent is better fit. But uh, government, in my knowledge and what I can uh, get from my source of information, is trying to limit this to make room for more companies to grow. An important thing for you all to know is that uh, in WeChat, priority uh, for promotion is given to the uh, WeChat, uh, where WeChat invested and got um, majority shareholding. For example, um, Mobike or Didi or uh, some other services like food delivery, ticket booking, these kind of things where Tencent has a majority share control, they could uh, really promote those services to be the primary choice for the user so that they get higher sponsorship. Um, the, another thing is if you have ever published app or China or you were trying to do something on WeChat and you were refused, it is most likely because you didn't have a local company set up or your foreign company, wherever your foreign company is, that didn't have meet criteria for Tencent for you to get approved. Now there are workarounds about this and uh, especially if your account got shut down for any reason because there are some small and very minor um, uh, things in law that uh, Tencent execute very strictly. Now the, the problem, how you can solve this problem is you need to have some Chinese person on your team and they need to write a letter to Tencent uh, asking for the ex exactly reasons why your account has been refused or is refused and you will uh, uh, correct those mistakes, comply with the, the, those uh, uh, rules and your app or, or your mini program or whatever you are trying to do will get approved. Now if the Tencent for whatever reason do not approve you and you have complied to everything that the law was uh, um, that, that the law says you need to find any Chinese person who can go here to some regulatory body and submit a um, uh, case for a review and they are to my knowledge they are working very efficiently on this one to get things right because the government is really punishing 
uh, uh, this type of companies when they are trying to uh, close somebody from uh, using the, their services because they should not be closed for anyone, any foreign company or domestic company to that matter. Now, this happened a couple of times in China to the Chinese companies. I'll give you one example. There was a small uh, startup company that refused funding from Tencent. They were uh, doing something in uh, online um, online e-commerce, a small online e-commerce and they had some something to do with jewelry, things like that and Tencent offered them a lot of money to make them their uh, household brand, brand and they wanted their control and things like that but the girl who was founder, she was a Chinese, uh, grew up in Paris um, she refused to, to take the money and uh, she wanted to grow her uh, venture by herself with the uh, industry experience that she has and, and connections she has. And uh, Tencent got angry and they banned her. So she went to the local government and she uh, went on a, on a month uh, uh, court law and she got Tencent uh, on the law and they had to pay fine her to her and make sure she used all the services out of the box. So th th there are ways around everything that's, that's happening. You just have to know the right people and th the right direction you should take. Uh, what else should you know and what else you need to know about Tencent? Leave in the comments and uh, in some of the next episodes I will invite somebody from Tencent or somebody who was working on somebody who is using their services and we're gonna ask them specific questions that can solve some of your problems. Now. Uh, Additional thing, if you are interested in publishing games in China, which is actually something that I do, I'm in the game industry, uh, I strongly suggest you reading that right now in this very moment, 2018, because uh, the, the market is really uncertain to next year how many games could be released and uh, what could happen in that matter. But till then, guys, take care, stay with our channel, and don't forget to ask anything you want to know this was the episode about basics, about business from China, and see you in the next one. Take care.